This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Last Saturday night at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada, in a championship contest that was broadcast on ESPN, WBO welterweight champion Terrence Bud Crawford put his title on the line against former IBF welterweight champion Kel Brook. The action began with a tactical rhythm. Crawford was studiously testing Brooke out of an orthodox stance. There was a lot of fainting and posturing as both boxers were patiently measuring the other's reactions. They were each trying to get a read on the range, and they were both looking to get their jabs going. Late in round one, Crawford briefly switched to his southpaw stance where he darted in landing leather. Some isolated quick exchanges broke out where Crawford and Brooke were each having spots of success. This trend continued in the first couple of rounds where the two fought on fairly even terms. Near the end of round two, Crawford switched back to southpaw and he came out in that stance to begin the third. Things remained tactical, where both boxers were frequently maneuvering for favorable positions. Brooks started trying to lead with his right more with Crawford in the southpaw stance. Things started heating up a bit more throughout round three. Early in round four, Crawford drilled Brook with a short booming right that sent him staggering. The ropes held him up and it was a knockdown. He beat the count and he looked mighty dazed. Cool as an assassin, Crawford pounced on Brook and referee Tony Weeks jumped in to wave it off. The fight was over. It was a fourth round technical knockout for Terrence Bud Crawford. Crawford retained his title and he did so in overpowering style. With the victory, Bud has reaffirmed the fact that he is one of the greatest boxing talents competing today. In fact, there are many observers who view Crawford as the best of them all in the current boxing landscape. His biggest competition for that top spot include Canelo Alvarez and Inoue Noia. Inoue is coming off of an impressive stoppage victory against Jason Maloney a few short weeks back. And it looks like Canelo will be fighting on December 19th against Callum Smith. In my mind, those are the top three pound-for-pound -pound boxers in the world today. But there are others who have a valid place in this discussion. For Crawford, this victory was business as usual. He has a perfect record of 37-0 with 28 of those wins coming by way of knockout. But more impressive still, Crawford is 15-0 in title fights, with 12 of those 15 victories coming inside the distance. That is mighty impressive stuff any way you slice it. Quickly recapping those 15 championship contests, in March 2014, Crawford won his first major championship when he defeated reigning WBO lightweight champion Ricky Burns by 12-round unanimous decision. In June 2014, Crawford successfully defended his WBO lightweight crown when he scored an impressive 9th-round technical knockout against then-undefeated Yuriokis Gamboa. In November 2014, Crawford made another successful title defense when he was awarded a lopsided 12-round unanimous decision against Ray Beltran. In April 2015, Crawford jumped up in weight when he scored a 6th-round technical knockout against Tomas DeWarme to win the vacant WBO junior welterweight title. This made him a two-division world champion. Crawford made the first defense of his junior welterweight title in October 2015 when he scored a 10th round stoppage victory against Derry Jean. In February 2016, Crawford made another successful title defense when he scored a 5th round technical knockout against Henry Lundy. In July 2016, Crawford was awarded a 12-round unanimous decision against undefeated Victor Postal in a unification bout where Crawford earned the WBC junior welterweight title. In December 2016, Crawford successfully defended his unified championship when he scored an 8th-round stoppage against John Molina Jr. 
In May 2017, Crawford again defended his unified championship when he scored a 10th round stoppage against Felix Diaz. In August 2017, Crawford put his unified WBO WBC championship on the line against undefeated unified IBF WBA champion Julius Ndongo. Crawford won the bout by third round knockout to become the undisputed WBO, WBC, IBF, WBA 140 pound champion. Crawford moved up in weight again in June 2018 when he scored a ninth round technical knockout against undefeated defending WBO champion Jeff Horn. This marked Crawford as a three division world champion. In October 2018, Crawford defended his welterweight title when he scored a 12th round stoppage victory against then undefeated Jose Benavidez Jr. In April 2019, Crawford made another successful title defense when he scored a 6th round stoppage against former junior welterweight champion Amir Khan. Last December, Crawford again successfully defended his WBO welterweight crown when he scored a ninth round stoppage against then undefeated Agus Kavliaskis. And then of course last Saturday, Crawford once again looked spectacular when he scored the impressive stoppage against Kell Brook. So Crawford is a perfect 15-0 in world championship contests, and he is a three-division world champion who is clearly among the most talented boxers in the world today. The main criticism from Crawford's loudest detractors involves his level of competition. In that sense, it is very similar to the loudest critics of In No Way. But in both cases, I don't think these criticisms carry much weight. I believe the competition level that Crawford has consistently been beating is far better than his loudest critics would otherwise suggest. But Crawford just turned 33 years old back in September, so if he wants to truly make his mark in the sport, beating a better dance partner would go a long way. Fortunately for Crawford, he has two potential opponents that can potentially enhance his reputation considerably, Earl Spence Jr. and Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Pacquiao will be 42 years old next month. So the Pac-Man is certainly no spring chicken, but all the same, not only is Pacquiao a living legend, but to this day, Pacquiao remains an elite level champion. Last year, Pacquiao turned back the clock a bit when he was awarded a 12 round split decision against Keith Thurman. That victory earned Pacquiao the WBA welterweight championship. So despite his age, Pacquiao remains a legit force who you can never count out. If Crawford could land a big bout against Pacquiao and win, it would undoubtedly help raise his profile. At the same time, it's a bit of a lose-lose situation because Pacquiao remains risky and at his age, a victory over Pacquiao might not command the type of respect it would rightly deserve. Then we have Spence Jr. He actually has a fight coming up on December 5th when he will put his unified WBC IBF welterweight championship on the line against former two-division world champion Danny Garcia. Spence himself is a highly regarded pound-for-pound -pound talent. Some observers question whether he will ever be the same following his serious car accident last year. But that aside, Spence is an undefeated, unified champion who appeared to have been steadily improving. Provided Spence wins his matchup with Garcia, a showdown between Crawford and Spence would be the most logical next step for both welterweight champions. Anything short of a bout against Spence or Pacquiao is unlikely to silence Crawford's critics, and with the inherent difficulty of the politics of boxing, it is unfortunate that the biggest fights that make sense don't always happen when they matter the most. But hopefully, Crawford will get the opportunity to face one of these high-profile opponents sooner than later. And whatever Crawford does next, I, for one, will certainly tune in. That's all I got. 
Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.